Good evening and welcome to the special Thanksgiving meeting of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen. Please stand as the, the scouts present colors. Thank you. And would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, Emma. We're going to call upon Pastor Paul Jaley to lead us in prayer. Pastor. Let's pray. Lord God, at this Thanksgiving, may we all embrace an attitude of gratitude. We thank you that our pilgrim forebears made a covenant with you to walk in all your ways, made known or to be made known. We thank you that when they were persecuted for their convictions, did not dismay them. For their desires were set on your ways, they rested on your providence, knowing whom they believed. We also thank you that they were armed with faith and patience when facing hardships in Holland, were focused on propagating and advancing the gospel of the kingdom of Christ in these parts, even as stepping stones unto others for the performing of so great a work when they came. We also thank you for the Wampanoag people, whose kindness toward them and peace with them and whose thanksgiving feast they shared that took place in such a unique fashion for three days in the fall of 1621. And in light of these testimonies, we thank you that it was the Spirit of God and His grace that sustained them. So may we all, as their pastor John Robinson exhorted us to do, make peace with God through Christ, preserve peace among each other, seek the common good above our own selfish interests, and thus continue to make this town and our nation, one nation under God, respecting one another regardless of any differences, having civility in our expressions, with the result of peace and justice for all. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Please be seated. We are very honored to have elected officials with us this evening representing our federal government and the state government. I'm going to call upon Congressman Keating to bring greetings. Congressman. Thank you. Uh, see, I guess my seat almost went out. I don't know that was that sound. <laughs> this is very old here. Uh, 
it's, it's at a time like this, I, I remember my one acting uh, uh, character role. I think I was in the third grade, and I was the Elder Brewster. Is, is the Elder Brewster here among us now? I know Governor Bradford is here. Well, uh, a little known fact in the Capitol, a room that's seldom open to the public was the President's room. And I went in there, uh, and I saw up on the top, Brewster. Uh, Elder Brewster. So, uh, if you ever have occasion to do that, think back to what's going on as we approach the 400th. Uh, I have a citation here that commemorates a very special time, not just here in America's hometown, but throughout our country. And the lessons that the pilgrims have taught us, the lessons of resiliency, uh, perseverance, and faith are lessons we can all take to heart this year and every year. Uh, it's a special day, and I know that most people uh, feel the way I do. Uh, it's my favorite holiday. Uh, commemorating today, I would like to share and present to Ken uh, a citation from Congress, uh, which is proudly presented to the town of Plymouth in recognition of celebrating the 395th anniversary of Thanksgiving, the Board of Selectmen's ceremonial Thanksgiving meeting. Uh, it's a tradition uh, rich to our town uh, and one uh, that's integral to our country. Thank you, Congressman. I'm going to call on uh, Senator DiMacito to please come up and read the proclamation from our governor. Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, read this proclamation on behalf of the governor. And uh, as we come together and celebrate in this community, uh, it is just see what happened this weekend and how people from all over uh, the, the Commonwealth and frankly all over the country came to be here for the great parade for the opportunity to celebrate Thanksgiving. And I, as I shared uh, on Saturday, we own Thanksgiving. This is where it all started and we should be, the fact that we uh, make sure that this is such um, uh, an important holiday because we know in this in this country we all give thanks because we're so blessed we have so many things and that is why um, as across the nation people give thanks because of the blessings that we've had in this great nation um, and so uh, it is an honor to serve uh, in the capacity of state senator on behalf of the town of Plymouth uh, I'm gonna read a, a the proclamation on behalf of the governor Commonwealth of Massachusetts a proclamation Whereas after the first harvest in 1621, the pilgrims gathered with their neighbors, the Wampanoag Native Americans, broke bread, gave thanks, and celebrated their freedom in Plymouth, observing the first Thanksgiving in American colonies. And whereas during the American Revolution, in November of 1777, the Continental Congress proclaimed a day of Thanksgiving, Samuel Adams, the son of Massachusetts, wrote, for solemn Thanksgiving and praise, that with one heart and one voice, the good people may express their grateful feelings for, of their heart and consecrate themselves to the service of the divine benefactor. And whereas with the country torn by civil war, Abraham Lincoln urged his fellow Americans to gather and give thanks during one of the most difficult times in our nation's history, established Thanksgiving as the national holiday in 1864, Lincoln wrote these words, to these bounties which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come. Others have been added which are so extraordinary a nature that they cannot fail to penetrate or, and soften even the heart which is habitually insensible uh, to the ever watchful providence of the Almighty God. And whereas in this season of thanks, we should take the time to remember and reach out to our neighbors in need by providing a helping hand, working in food pantries and kitchens, donating clothes and volunteering in our communities. And whereas today as family and friends across the Commonwealth and country gather together, may we be mindful of our gifts and talents, our blessings, relationships, goodwill and peace with, that we enjoy, the liberty we cherish and the hopes that we have for a joyful, joyful year ahead. Now I therefore, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 24th, 2016 to be Thanksgiving Day 
and urge all citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance given in the executive chamber in Boston on the first day of November in the year of 2016 and the independence of the United States of America in the 240th. By His Excellency Charles D. Baker, the uh, Lieutenant Governor Karen E. Polito, and the uh, Secretary of the Commonwealth, William Galvin. Thank you and God save the Commonwealth. <laughs> Thank you, Senator, and this, along with the other presentations tonight, will become part of our archives. We appreciate the greetings from the governor. This time, I would like to call upon Senator, uh, Senator, <laughs> <laughs> Representative Muratori. <laughs> I knew I liked you for some reason. <laughs> well, thank you uh, for inviting us here tonight. It's a great honor to be here. You know, at Thanksgiving time, uh, uh, thank you for your kind words, Reverend Jaley and what you talked about in civility and you know it, it, the timing of your your uh, your little lecture here tonight was wonderful uh, so we appreciate that and you know really you know those words mean a lot particularly this time of year and what's been going on in this country so uh, thank you for that um, so on behalf of the house and senate i have a citation not as long as the governor's uh, but i will read uh, a portion of this this is from the commonwealth of massachusetts house of representatives be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its serious congratulations to the town of Plymouth in recognition of celebrating the 395th anniversary of Thanksgiving at the Board of Selectmen Ceremonial Thanksgiving Meeting, given this 22nd day of November 2016, signed by Randy Hunt, Representative Tom Calter, Senator Di Macedo, Speaker of the House Robert DeLeo, and yours truly, Matt Muratori. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Each year when we do this special ceremony, we work with Dr. Bavini, and a school is selected. And we, it goes alphabetically, so it's very fair. And this year, we're very pleased to have the students from Cold Spring here. Thank you for, for being here. And uh, the students of Cold Spring Elementary are going to do a Thanksgiving poem. Give them one more round of applause. <laughs> And now we have two students from PCIS that we're very pleased to have, Caitlin Hales and Chelsea Winneberg. And they're going to portray two voices of Thanksgiving poetry. Come, ye thankful people come, by George Elvey. Come, ye thankful people come. Raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in, ere the winter storm begin. God. God our maker doth provide 
for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come. Raise the song of Harvest Home. To the children of earth by Nancy Eldridge, let every day be one of giving thanks. Let every being and creature along our paths be appreciated. Let all plant life be acknowledged. Let all the winged ones of the air know our gratefulness. Great Spirit, thank you for all that is. For all that we take, for all that we give, our acknowledgement. Thank you for every mountain and every grain of sand, wind and air, fire and earth, for every living thing, and for the beauty of our lives this day, we thank you. Very well done, thank you both. We have two very special guests this evening. Uh, not the real ones, but very close. William and Alice Bradford. Governor? Uh, thank you. Uh, and good evening uh, to one and all. And my name is William Bradford, and this is my uh, loving wife, Alice. Good evening. Uh, uh, I pray that I, I be not too tedious, as some might know, that I can be in, in prolonged in many things. Uh, but for myself, uh, as the pastor had spoken earlier, uh, myself, I was born in a small village in the North Midlands of England. Uh, yet when I was just at the age of majority, I, I left my home country of England and fled in exile to live in Holland, uh, where I dwelt for about a year. And then we were granted and, and guaranteed safety in the city of Leiden. Uh, from there, I, I dwelt there for uh, nearly a dozen years before coming and emigrating to this country. I come over on the first ship, a ship called the Mayflower. Uh, I think most of you people are aware of it. Uh, and that winter, we suffered uh, a great loss. Uh, yet, that following uh, autumn, our harvest being gotten in, we became the partakers of plenty. Uh, the next year, uh, we had a fair and, and decent harvest. The summer of 1623, uh, <laughs> my wife Alice arrived. <laughs> Just so. Well, uh, I would say a good number of us arrived at that time. I, we over doubled the number of people in town. Uh, they had had a, a terribly difficult time prior to that. God was testing them and uh, showing that he, he wished for them to stay in the country. Uh, and it was not terribly long after we arrived, we had a day of thanksgiving uh, to, to thank God for uh, ending the drought that had been suffered in town, uh, affecting our corn harvest, um, and to thank him for bringing, well, the two ships that arrived that summer safely. He did very much so. He, <laughs> he, did. he showed what mercy could on our poor de dejected souls <laughs> for the time. Uh, uh, and since God has delivered... Uh, us uh, two sons. Uh, Just so. Who I think this will be a fair and pleasant country for them. But in, indeed. Uh, things truly have been uh, far better since then. <laughs> Although the, all days are not so plentiful as others. No. Uh, the last several, I, I think, have been good. Very much so. And we shall pray to God that they continue to be such. Indeed. <laughs> Do you have any, anything else, dear? Uh, I suppose so, but, um, well, what more of it was? That was before I arrived, that, that uh, harvest feast that first year. The f uh, it happened about a half a year after Mr. Carver, our first governor, had died, and I was elected to, to hold the office. Uh, the, the great prince, the Massasoit, he had come with, oh, some 90 of his men. Uh, I prescribed, I had sent four men out to shoot some birds. They'd gotten in probably half the day enough to team the, feed the town for the better part of a week. But after a special manner, we did rejoice. Uh, we exercised our arms, uh, practice in military affairs. Uh, some sports and other entertainments were to be had, but good food for three days. <laughs> Well, and that's to say about, well, about a month after I arrived in the country, we were then married. And uh, I would say it was somewhat similar at that time. It was. I should say it's not an annual occurrence that we have feasting such as that, but the Massasoit then came with oh, 100, over 100 men, 120, I would say. At least, yes, yeah, six score, 120. 
Uh, and mind you, summertime being a, a leaner season, you know, your harvest has not gotten in yet. Uh, yeah, not continuing for three days, but just for the one. <laughs> just for but the one. But a very handsome bridal. I wish all of you were in attendance. Just so. I'd say as many deer as, at that time as there were than the first feast. Well, I'd say five bucks. <laughs> Well, and that is the benefit of this time of year. It is the fat time of year and the year of plenty, and we shall always be grateful to God for that. It's true. I spoke to you. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Governor and Mrs. Bradford. I trust that uh, those of us that are sitting down to our Thanksgiving table I uh, won't have to worry about 90 plus guests uh, being there. But if you are going to be confronted with that, speak to the governor uh, afterwards. This uh, is a very, very historic building that uh, is still a hidden jewel in the Plymouth area. The 1749 courthouse has served this town well. It has served first, of course, as a courthouse. It served as our town hall and currently it serves as a museum. We're very pleased to have Dr. Curtin here this evening, who is the chairperson of the committee that oversees the courthouse, to tell us a um, special story tonight. Dr. Curtin. Thank you, Chairman Tavares. So for how many of you is this the first time you've been in this building? Right here in Plymouth. Well, this building goes back quite a long time to before when we were a country, before the United States was even formed. It was built in 1749. And I'm going to tell you a story about a couple of things that happened right here in this room where you are now. And it has to do with one of our Plymouth residents who lived here in the 18th century, and his name was Caesar Watson. We know very little about Caesar. We don't know where he was born. We don't know if he came over here on a ship or what the name of that ship was. But we do know a couple of things about him. He was a black man and he was here in Plymouth as a slave. He was owned by a man here in Plymouth called Elkanah Watson. Now, Caesar Watson lived here at a time when we were part of the British Empire and when we were at war with France. And the British government said, you know what? The French have Canada, and I think we should have it. So they got a, a force of 27,000 men and sent them up into Canada to seize the French fort of Louisbourg. And among those men were some men right here from our town, and one of them was this Caesar Watson. So they go up into Canada, and they surround the fortress. They're bombarding it with cannons. They're making sure no one can get in with any food. They want to take that fort from the French. Caesar Watson does something very <coughs> unusual then, and we don't know quite how he did it. But somehow, he manages to get inside the fortress. And he meets the French commander, who is named the Chevalier du Drucourt. And he convinces this man to give him his freedom. The French commander writes out a document and says, I am going to take this man, Caesar Watson of Plymouth, and make him a free man by virtue of the French government. And he gives him a certificate, a signed certificate, and Caesar takes it. Well, then the story turns a little unhappy for Caesar because unfortunately the French lose. And the British and American forces take the fortress, the French have to surrender, and they leave. Caesar has this document in his hand that says he's a free man, but he puts it in his pocket, he says nothing, and he goes back to Plymouth, to the household of the Watsons, and resumes his life as a slave. Maybe that would have been the end of the story. But Caesar met another woman in town, Hester Winslow. She was a slave right in the street we now call Moore Street to Edward Winslow, who was the great grandson <coughs> of Edward Winslow who came on the Mayflower. Caesar Watson marries Hester Winslow, and they have a daughter together. And Caesar realizes something very terrible. The laws of slavery in Massachusetts at that time and all throughout the colonial world said any child who is born takes their status from their mother. 
So any child born to someone who is a slave, mother, would be enslaved themselves. So Caesar and his wife, both being slaves, their little daughter Eunice, from the moment she was born, she was not free. And Caesar didn't like that. So he came to this courthouse, and he worked out an agreement. And in this courthouse, a document was prepared. And he said he worked out an arrangement that his daughter would be given her freedom. He approached his wife's owner, and Mr. Winslow, and said, I would like you to free my, my child. And Edward Winslow agreed. He said, all right, I will grant her, as, as though she were born free, I will grant her her freedom. But there's one condition. you got to take care of her. And that was very, very hard for Caesar to do because he and his wife didn't have their own home. He was owned by another person, so she, they, they weren't able to support their child. So Caesar had another thought. He said, all right, I'm going to find a way, even though I cannot keep my child myself, I'm going to find a way for my little girl to have a better life and to be free. So he came to the courthouse and he worked out another agreement. And this one was that his daughter would be indentured. She would be set out with another family <coughs> who would clothe her and feed her. And in exchange, she would work for that family for 17 years. She was indentured from the age of two for 17 years. But Caesar did something else that he put into that document. And that was, he didn't just want after 17 years of hard work his daughter to be free, he wanted her to have a better life. So in that document, he insisted that his daughter be taught to read and write, that she have an education. And so that was signed right here in this room. Caesar Watson was able to provide an education for his little girl who had been born into slavery. But after that, Caesar must have done some other deep thinking because he remembered the piece of paper that he had gotten from the French commander that said he too was a free man. And he got himself a lawyer. And he came to the courthouse with his certificate and his lawyer and they argued a case right here in this room with a jury of Plymouth men as to whether or not Caesar Watson, because of this certificate that was given to him when he was in Canada, would mean that he was forever free and no longer a slave. And the jury of Plymouth people agreed with Caesar. And right here in this room, they granted him his freedom. Now, it was 10 long years after that before the Commonwealth of Massachusetts decided they were going to end slavery for everybody in the state. And I think it's, it's really exciting for us to think in the history that we have here in this town, we led the way in that fight 10 years before slavery was abolished here. And I think Caesar Watson, if we could have met him, would strike us as a person who also had courage and perseverance That's right. against hardship the same way that the pilgrims did. And I think it's another one of our stories in our long and unique history that's worthy of remembrance. That's the story of Caesar Watson. Thank you. Dr. Curtin, we look forward to uh, many more stories to come over the years. And we also invite you back uh, in the spring when the courthouse is open. Mr. Bagney, uh, who has been here for many, many years, uh, is a guide uh, in the, uh, the courtroom. And uh, there are countless treasures on the first floor that uh, you would be able to, uh, to look at and to learn more of the history of this great, great community. Now comes the, the solemn part of our ceremony. I'm going to call upon uh, the governor and, and Mrs. Bradford to please uh, come up. We started the week off with a parade. We have a great football game that's going to be played in, in another day. But also there's great historical significance to this holiday. And it is best uh, said in Governor Bradford's quote. Governor. Thus out of small beginnings, greater things have been produced by his hand that made all things of nothing and gives being to all things that are. And, <clears throat> and as one small candle may light a thousand, so the light here kindled hath shown to many, yea, in some sort to our whole nation, let the glorious name of Jehovah have all the praise.
copy, please. Unfortunately, the fire chief will probably see this ceremony. Smile. <laughs> Again, we would like to thank the students that participated uh, tonight in the program and, and everyone else that came here. This is a small, uh, short program, but it is done to remind us of the great history of this town and that uh, there is a, a great deal to be learned uh, from the pilgrim men and women and children that founded this great country. And it did, as the senator and the representative have referred to, it started here, here in Plymouth. We are the oldest community in the United States and we can become extremely proud of that more and more so as we approach our 400th anniversary in 2020. I'm now going to ask Laura Francis to conclude the program with God Bless America. Laura. God Bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies, from the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. For coming. That concludes our program. Happy Thanksgiving from the Plymouth Board of Selectmen.